There's only, only one reason somebody exists on your sales team, and that is to sell new policies. If they're not selling or not doing the activity to sell, I should say too, then it has to be addressed. Hi everybody, it's Kelly Donahue Piero here, and I'm excited because they were sneak releasing on our podcast and YouTube some of the sections of our new agency growth program. This is huge. As we go through the hard market, your team really needs to move beyond quoting to an actual sales process. Many agencies I go into have a robust quoting process, but it often lacks a lot of the sales components. And these are high value, high target opportunities that you might be turning off just by having an inefficient process. So we're going to focus today on some sections in our leadership section. So every one of our programs has a section just for agency owners or leaders to help get them into the mode of being a great sales manager. So for today, you're going to hear a release of a few things. One, how to set up compensation and incentives. Two, how to set sales goals. And three, what to do if somebody isn't hitting their sales goals. Now, in these sections, we are going to reference some materials. The only way to get those materials is, of course, to get our new course. Our course is launching from April. It's actually launched right now, but it's on sale for $4.95 until the end of the month. So $4.30.24. So $495 gets you our entire sales course recordings, quizzes, workbook scripts, quote sheets, the ideal client, our audit sheets. Let's see what else we have in our job descriptions. We have how to set up tracking. So literally like you want a sales culture, it's in a bucket for $4.95. And then it goes up to almost $1,000 starting on uh, May 1st. So it's not an April Fool's Day joke. Check it out though. I mean, this has just so much great stuff in it. Even if you sit down with your sales team and just watch one of the videos or 10 to 15 minutes each every week, you will just like earn so many sales skills. So check it out. But for the time being, I'm gonna introduce our first video release that you can listen to or view as a mashup here. So this one is on compensation. We get a lot of questions about what do I pay a producer? How do we motivate them? We're gonna actually give you a few strategies here, depending on if the team services and sells, they're strictly a producer, what to pay them, how to wind that down. And in our agency uh, program on growth, we do have a whole calculator of how to tell an ROI on a producer. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Now I've been to many agencies, everybody's motivated a little differently. You do have to know your team. So that's why we give you a lot of options. So before I let you go, hop on over to our website, check out the course while you're listening. And when we'll meet back here as we introduce the next one, which is how to set sales goals. All right, now let's get into the nitty gritty of incentive plans, compensation. I mean, we get so many questions on this. What do we pay people? What do we pay producers? And I understand it's very complicated. And unfortunately, the answer I'm going to give you is a little complicated too. Compensation varies so much dependent on the type of policies, if you're feeding them leads, you know, their experience. So I find, and agencies tend to lean on the too generous side, and then they actually don't pull enough profit from the experience. So we're going to walk you through a couple options that might work for you. Changing people's comp is very difficult, sometimes necessary. Trust me, we do do that a lot with agencies. The bottom line is, Producers are here to write business. The other thing is, it doesn't make sense to lose the ranch to put a policy on. So you need to be thinking, I've got to pay taxes on this money. I've got to pay management systems. I've got to pay, you know, I've got to make profit on it. So when you're coming up with these compensation models, it's very important not to go ahead and be too generous. If someone's killing it, you could always give them another bonus or another sales incentive. I like a moderate program that is fair and equitable to all parties with the wiggle room for a leader to put some extra in there for some extra motivation, some boost along the way. So don't go too far down the pike of giving away too much of the commissions. So the sales process must be aligned around the way your customer buys rather than the way you want to sell. Oh my gosh, so true. And you'll hear this. I know I keep talking about the secret shoppers that we're going to listen to, but It's just so, so very apparent, right? Like the reality of the situation is, is that, you know, we have to think about how the customer wants to buy, not what's easy for us. And this is where we get so passionate that we don't email quotes because when you email a quote, you're making it about you, not about the customer. So here's some compensation considerations before we go down this road. One, every agency is different. 
So I can't say like this is the one size fits all model. I can't tell you what fit most. I can't tell you. You may look at it and be like, oh my goodness. That's okay. Every market's cost of living is very different. And if you have what, what you have, you feel is working, motivating the team and making the agency money, keep it. Okay. These are just other models. Or maybe the next producer you hire might go into a different scenario. People hate it when you mess with their compensation, but sometimes it is necessary. When we go in and we find out that these producers have way too sweet of a deal, that's not going to motivate them to sell. Producers need to be kept hungry to sell. So you have a lot to factor in here. Do they have a base salary? What's your benefits package? Are you providing the leads or are they generating them on their own? Where it gets really murky and messy is a little bit of both, right? Who's doing the service? Are they servicing your book? How much service do they have to do? Is there a quota that they have to hit? Quota is different than sales goal, by the way. Quota means you're terminated if you don't hit it after a certain amount of time. And we like to say that there's incentives and compensation. So incentives help motivate people towards certain things you want to trigger. Maybe it's putting business with a certain company that you want to hit a goal with. Maybe it's class selling. You know, we we really see the team's not doing this. We're going to put a little extra sprinkles on there compensation is what I make for doing my job. And so you need to think about the fact that there are two models working here. And again, this is one of those things that in every agency, I have seen some people do wild and crazy things for like a jeans day. And then I've seen people have $100 bills on the table and not do anything with it. So you have to kind of think through this. But the bottom line is salespeople only exist to write business. So if you have a producer that is not producing you need to address it. They are a liability. They're a drag on your balance sheet and they're holding the whole agency back. So we don't keep people because we like them. In the sales world, it's very cut and dry. You either hit it or you don't hit it. So we do have a compensation calculator for a producer. If you have not already gotten the sheet, head over to the school, uh, the download section in the course, grab it. I'm going to give you, you can hit me on pause real quick, but I'm going to pop this open so that we can see it and that you're in a good spot to review it with me. Okay, here's what the producer compensation looks like. So we kind of just put down some things that you would plug in. And again, everybody's markets are different. So you might be looking, base of $28,000, no one's going to come work for me. Understood. The only thing I'm going to stress to everybody here on the base, it needs to keep the person hungry. If you overpay said person, they will not write policies because they are comfortable. And again, everybody's different, but you want a producer to work. So when they come and say, I need X, you still need to be below that. And I know that freaks people out. We might lose them. If that's the case, they weren't a true producer. Okay. You didn't sell the culture in your agency hard enough. So you start with your base and the input in yellow, right? Then you start with their monthly premium goal. Now I said first year, you know, that's, they have to gear up. Maybe they're licensed, maybe they're not. So we put 25 grand and, you know, and this is monthly just so you know. So put this as monthly. I believe personal lines producers who are only doing production should be at $45,000 a month every month as their sales goal. Some people might be choking right now. Some people might be saying we sell 80. Great. Commercial lines, I still think you should probably be up in the 60s at least. So kind of think through that. Premium sold, that's annualized so that the calculator will do the math for you. And put average agency commission. Every agency is different. Yours might be 12, 13, 10, whatever you got put it in here. That will give you the average commission to the agency. Now, here's a new business commission splits. This is very, very critical that you think through, okay, I've got base salary, how much commission, what does this look like? So we started with a heavier base and 30% new business commission. And then when their base dropped, the commission went up and up, okay? We talk about retention rate. You get your agency's average retention rate. Now, there's nothing on year one because they probably won't have any policies or anything. But if your agency's at 93%, this is what it would look like. We then say the producer renewal commission. Now, I'm going to be very clear on this one. I think it's super critical that they make commission if they touch that policy at renewal. So it maybe it's a VIP personal lines, but if service is doing renewal reviews and it's going to service, they really should not make a renewal commission, especially if you're handing them leads. So this is where you're going to have to go ahead and think through this a tad bit. If they are part of the renewal, Then we go there. Now, we always want a higher new business and less renewal because I want them to focus on new business. So we pick 20%. Retention revenue. So that means that at the end of year two, they're going to retain this. At the end of year three, they retain this because the book grows based on their sales goal. The retention commission. 
So you can see that, you know, this is right here of what they would be making from you, what you got. So 20% 20 of 39,000 is 77. If your agency offers health insurance, we put a health insurance expense here. Sometimes people don't qualify your one. You could put it in here if they did. 8% payroll tax. Usually agency overhead is 15%. So again, if that's bigger or larger based on how you're running your agency, you could change that. So we have total expenses. So here's the total revenue. So the first year on this producer, we're going to lose $8,000. Okay. But the next year, I'm going to come up $32,000 and then ninety four. dollars So I could take an $8,000 loss. The producer make 40, then 51, then 62. So you're really making about 10 grand. I'm here for that. So this is how you can play around with this calculation a little bit to get what makes sense for you and your agency. I highly recommend you spend some time on this. Don't just go put plug my numbers and every agency is different. These are just some kind of baseline statistics that we're looking at. So sample sales team bonus. So let's just say that, you know, you're not interested in paying people commission. You have a group of salespeople. They're doing great. Uh, maybe service team and you want to pool them together. It's very normal and natural for people to want to pool service team members together to pay a split bonus. Actually, service people love this. They don't have the sales mentality of let me go, let me go hunt and kill bud. So take very simple, easy, take 1% of the written premium. And, you know, if they hit the retention goal, they get 2% of the premium back to the first dollar if they exceed the monthly production goal. So let's just walk through this example. It's a little tricky, right? The monthly goal, let's just say, is $30,000 in written premium for the service team. They write $20,000 per year new, they get $200. They write $30,000 one, they get $900 because of that multiplier there. This helps people. The reason we leave premium is it's very difficult to understand commission and this carrier and that carrier. When it's too hard to figure out how you get paid, most people shut down. So this is one other option. Now, we do have a few individual and team incentives, right? Bonus for exceeding the goal. Quarterly sales report. People love this, right? It's so easy and simple. And maybe we think it's a bit cheesy, but people like it. Gift cards, time off. I always love car detailing or home cleaning. I mean, who doesn't want their car detailed? I could use my car being detailed right now. My dog is a disaster in my vehicle. And it's it's like a never-ending battle of dog hair. <laughs> anyway, team could be a bonus. I don't love time off, but people do. And every agency is different. I think time off gets really difficult to manage over time. Have a fun event together, bring in lunch, gift cards, or we love spin the wheel with names. So just keep it lively, fun, something kind of interesting and engaging for people. And this allows you to kind of direct their focus a little differently based on what's going on in the agency. Next up, we're going to talk about how to set these sales goals if you don't have them already. So I'll see you in the next lesson. All right. I hope you enjoyed that and picked up a few great tips. Next up, how to set sales goals. So in this one, we do have a calculator again that will help you identify if you want to hit a certain growth amount, what that looks like over time, how much rate increases, retention impacts that, and really what you need to sell a new business, but then backing into also what does each person need to produce so you can set a sales goal. Now, oftentimes agencies either have some sales goals, but nobody knows about them, or they were told, but no one can recite them. If you can't recite a sales goal, then it doesn't really matter. That means that it's not effective. The other half of it is, as we set sales goals, if you've had none and your sales are, let's just say, less than ridiculously amazing, you're going to need to start somewhere and kind of earn your way up to the top of really where you want to be. Setting unattainable sales goals doesn't really help anybody. Own where you are and set some mile markers. All right, I'm going to let this course take over and you can hear a little bit more about how we handle this. But don't forget, you can get the calculator when you subscribe to our school. All right, so let's talk about how to set sales goals. I know some agencies have sales goals, some don't. Sometimes we meet with agencies and unfortunately we feel that their sales goals are just maybe a little lower than they could should be. So we want to make sure that we're focused on how do we go ahead and get the right sales goals. So when obstacles arise, you change your direction to reach your goal. You do not change your decision to get there. And as I'm going to share with you some of those statistics in the last session of what we believe clients, you know, or producers should be able to achieve, you might be thinking, oh my gosh. But instead of thinking, oh my gosh, think how do I get there? And this training course is a great way to start. So setting goals. If we've never had sales goals, we have to make them realistic to start. You can't go off of what we say is the best practices, right? you're going to fail. <laughs> so that's like me saying, hi, you know what I want to do is um, I want to lose weight. 
And I decide that by next week, I need to be 50 pounds lighter. Like that's not the definition of success. The definition is getting stronger and better every day. So we have set, steps to setting sales goals. One, we have to identify the growth target. So in order to do this, you need to identify your retention rate. And I know that this is challenging. If you need help, we recommend looking at our agency retention course. We talk about that a lot in there. You are going to have to clean up some data. You know, lo and behold, if you're in a pinch, you can always go ahead and maybe do the biggest carrier. And that might be an opportunity for you. But I just, I just don't love that because you're also doing rewrites. We're in a hard market. I think you need to go to our retention course. If you own, if you're a member of the school or a consulting client taking this, you have access to it. You just purchased this one course. Take a look in the course body here. We'll have a link. You can check it out. You will have to subscribe to our school. We do only give that one as a subscription to one of our signature courses. We also want to talk about what's our estimated rate increases. This is big. How, you know, we're thinking right now at an average 9%, 10%, 20%, every market's different. And then we have to fill the gap because that's going to make us whole again. And then that's when we grow and we can set our target. So we have what's called our agency growth calculator. You can go to the download section and check it out. Hit pause if you don't have it already or hit pause, open up the calculator. And I'm going to walk you through it. Okay. So the first thing that you want to put in here is your current premium or revenue. Now, some agencies prefer revenue. Some agencies prefer premium. It's really up to you. These are just baseholder numbers. I hope no one has just $400,000 of premium taking this. But if you are and you're a solo producer, amen to you. <laughs> so I'm going to just put in some numbers here that might make a little bit more sense, right? I'm going to put in that this is a $15 million premium agency. Get that right. There we go. Nope, I did that. One more zero. Okay. I'm going to put retention at, let's just say, 93%. That means that I'm going to retain this much at the end of the year. I'm going to say average rate increased 5%. Again, this market's crazy, but we are all working on getting out of it. <laughs> so that means with a rate increase, I'll be at 14.6. I want to grow 10%. So my target end of year premium to grow 10% on the 15 is 16.5. So I need to grow 1.5 million in premium. So then I can come here and say, okay, you can go ahead and you see all this sort of comes on over. Now you're going to go ahead and here and put last year's premium in. So these, again, are just baseholder numbers. You'll delete them, but go January, February, March, April, May. And then that'll give you what the renewed rate and your target each month. There is books with a lot of seasonality. So this will help you guide that seasonality and not say, set too high of a sales goal on your worst month and too low on your best months. After that, you're going to come in here and say, okay, who's selling? And we need to then set sales goals, right? So we now know the number we're trying to hit. So we know we want to grow 10%. We know our retention. We know our rate. So now each month we should do this. Now, if retention goes up, awesome. We grow a little bit more. If retention goes down, we need to adjust these numbers, which is why it's kind of a moving target. But generally, it's a little conservative. So there is some wiggle room. You don't want to be jumping around all the time. If you go like a point lower in your retention and maybe a point lower than you think things are going to go, you'll only make it up in the long run and you'll exceed your goal, which is a great feeling. And you can really manipulate the system. You're just setting it up for success versus all the variants of things that can come along. So you pick producer one, producer two, they want a third of the goal, third in service puts it up. So that means each month, this is what each person needs to do based on the seasonality. So this is helpful. Play with it get dirty with it, you know, like make it your own, add it. If you want to do revenue, you just change the word revenue and put revenue in. The calculations all still work the same. But I want everybody to be thinking that we shouldn't just pick an arbitrary sales goal. You want to grow 10%, your sales goal needs to back into those other figures for true growth. I said this earlier, I believe in being a growth agency, not just a sales or service agency. So I want everybody to be thinking just a little bit about that. So Taking a look, that's how we, we go ahead and we set sales goals. You know, we've talked about this. If we've never had it, we have to be, we have to be realistic. You have to identify then who's contributing, sales agents, owners, service team members, which departments do you want to grow? Maybe you want to grow commercial more, they need a bigger sales goal. So that growth calculator on those tabs will help you clarify that. I also think that salespeople need activity goals. So... There's a lot of times, especially if you're doing larger commercial where there's activity that happens and you don't sell for a while. But I do think that these are like milestones that will keep us on track to hit the right numbers. So number of prospects added. Are they prospecting enough? X dates gathered. Huge, right? Then I know that they have a pipeline. I see so many producers that are just working whatever is on their desk. 
And that's not the game. To be truly into sales, that's you have to kind of build that pipeline out. How many appointments were set? Quotes, applications submitted, submitted per month, and the closing ratio. So a lot of these can be tracked in your management system by using specific codes. If you're using a sales CRM tool, all of these should be easy to do. You just need to be on it and looking at these numbers with the team routinely. So next up, we're going to talk about what do we do when the goals aren't being hit? The dirty little secret of how we're going to handle that next. Okay, last but not least, and hopefully you picked up a few good tips there on how to set good sales goals. Last but not least, we have our what to do if somebody's not hitting their sales goals. I have seen so many people overthink it and and just avoid having this conversation. But the reality is there's only, only one reason somebody exists in your sales team, and that is to sell new policies. If they're not selling or not doing the activity to sell, I should say too, then that has to be addressed. We walk you through in our scenarios how to hit those, how to approach the person, what to do, and some good tips to remind yourself that salespeople are here to sell. If they're doing anything else, they're either in a wrong position or it's something you need to take and address. Hi, everybody. So let's talk about the dirty little secret. What happens when somebody's not hitting their sales goals? This is so hard because a lot of times we might like the person, but remember, producers only exist to sell. So if they're not selling, they're either in the wrong seat on the bus or you're wasting valuable resources that you could use for growth in other areas. I love this quote. For me, life is continuously being hungry. The meaning of life is not to simply exist, to survive, but to move ahead, to go up, achieve, and conquer from Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you have an unmotivated <laughs> producer, guess what? That's a part of their job is they have to come hungry. They have to come motivated. Now you can do your part too, but I see so many agency owners take it very personally of why they're not saying, I haven't spent enough time on them. I haven't done this. Well, then that activity should be there. We should be just, just finishing it off. That's why we like those activity goals we just went through in addition to a sales goal. You know, that is something that they can handle. And that's why we need to make sure we have both sides stored away. So producers only exist to sell new business. If they're managing a, a book too, they can be more of an account executive or an inbound producer, but they still have a sales goal. So it's not okay for them to not hit their sales goal. If sales is part of their job, sales goals must be hit. Now, again, that might be why you want to go to a team goal to be a little bit more accommodating for your agency and your setup. But I think even if you have a very modest sales goal, it's something to hold people accountable to. And when there is that level of, I have to do this, people do it and your agency grows. Agencies struggle with holding on too long out of FUD and FUD is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. We doubt ourselves. Did we lead them? Did we guide them? Did they have enough taught training? All of these things. But I can tell you the right people are impressive and you never have those things in your head of second guessing yourself, right? You're like, I would totally hire this person again. They're amazing. The right person is in your face and I need help. Hey, I got this. Can I go out and prospect today? That's the right person. The right person is sitting in the side corner, hoping that you don't run the sales on number today. And then ready, preparing their reasons as why they're not selling. You need to be transparent and set goals on activity, premium, and revenue. That's be transparent. Tell people up front, this is the expectation so nobody can say, I didn't know. I do like the three strikes, your out rule, right? So three strikes, your out means in a rolling 12 months, you have three times you can hit your, miss your goal. That's 25%. That's quite a bit, right? So, but it looks, it's over 12 months. So if you find these are the wrong people, they're pretty consistent. They might have a good month, but it's, Pretty much early on, bad, 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 bad. We do have a performance improvement plan. You can go to the download section. Great for any team member, not just sales, but it just says, hey, we're off track here. I want to be upfront and not happy with your performance. And it even says in there, it could lead to termination. So I think it's very important that everybody take a moment and identify, hey, upfront, we are going to pit people. And, you know, I've seen people kind of go ahead and convert from a performance improvement plan. They just needed that like boundary. By far, most people don't make it, but you know what? You're doing the right thing. A lot of times people at that point will leave on their own and you're out of a difficult situation. So I think kindness, you know, transparency is kind. So telling people that they're not succeeding is the best way to do it. So many agency owners don't want to have a difficult conversation. So instead it's like behind closed doors. And really, it needs to be in a different scenario. So take a look. We're going to talk now about quote sheets, gaining uniformity. All right. Well, that concludes three of the leadership setup sections. We've got so many more. We've got who should be in the program, our job descriptions, looking at our quote sheet from a leadership perspective, setting up tracking. Another great one, ways to help your team fill their pipeline. So 
going back after last customer certificate request. We have a whole list of ways without spending any money that you can fill your pipeline. I would say go after the low hanging fruit first, but so often we want these new fancy leads as opposed to working our databases. How to build your ideal customer, a new business audit, an overview of our whole sales process. So that way you can see it and customize it. You can actually get our sales process documentation and the best ways to use this course as you're rolling it out. So good for leader snow. In our next podcast release, we're going to sneak release a few sections of the student section so you can get a flavor for that too. But check it out, $4.95 until April 30th, 2024. And if you subscribe before April 15th, as our pre-sale, you also get how to set growth goals for every role in your agency, from receptionist to accounting, anybody, because everybody can help an agency grow with the right mindset. So check it out. Go to our website, 495. You can't miss it, and you don't delay. You don't want to pay double starting in May.